It has been a long time since I've dropped a lesson on my critique lesson. More than one year to be exact. On our last lesson, we did a theory of spanning tree protocol on my critique. In this lesson, we'll be doing a practical lesson of a spanning tree protocol on my critique. And we'll be using these two babies. The Hoplites Router Bolter 941. Welcome to another informational lesson of Technology for All Academy, an academy that teaches information communication technology for free. To mention but a few, we have Cisco and Microtech series, and we'll be doing other vendor series in the future. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Taba Makobe, the founder of Technology for All Academy. Without any waste of time, let's begin our lesson for today. As we all know, Spanning tree protocol is a layer 2 protocol, which means it operates on switches. And our router box allows us to configure bridges, which act similar to switches. I have already configured my router 1 for spanning tree protocol. By default, Microtik uses rapid spanning tree protocol. But for our lesson, we're going to start first with the classic spanning tree, so that we can see how long does it take for spanning tree to converge on the olden days and then we'll move from classic 802.1d to rapid spanning tree and see how long does it take to converge with rapid spanning tree now let me go to my winbox so that i can show you how to configure spanning tree protocol on microtik on our winbox we're going to click on bridge dialog box to open bridge gui and in the bridge gui you're going to click the bridge tab and then we click the edition side so that we can open the new interface on the name field you can leave it as bridge one or you can name it as you wish i'm going to name mine as switch two after naming our bridge we need to click on the stp tab and then on the spanning tree protocol tab as i've said we are going to start with the classic spanning tree so what i'm going to do on protocol mode you click the radio button of spanning tree and then we click OK to save our configuration. Now that we are done with our, our bridge, we need to add the post to our bridge. And to do that, on the bridge GUI, we go to post tab. And then after you click the post tab, you click the edition side so that you can open the new bridge port. And on the new bridge port, that's where you select the interfaces that you want to add. In our lesson, I'm going to use Ether 1, 2, and Ethernet 3. Okay, let me go start with Ethernet 1, and then the bridge is switched to. And let's do Ethernet 2, last but not least, Ethernet 3. And we get disconnected because we are connected to Ethernet 3. But then it will connect again in few seconds. For those of you who watched our theory lesson, I hope you still remember that we said the spanning tree protocol is used to stop loops in our network remember we also said that on layer 2 or on the switches we don't have a ttl layer which is a time to leave time to leave we get it on layer 3 or the routers so in order for our switches to stop the loops we said they use what we call bpdus and bpdus are also used to elect the root bridge and we also talked about the post mode of the switches. Okay, now that I'm inside the pods, let me scroll to the right so that I can show you on router one. We can see on router one, uh, ether one is root, and then ether two is alternate port, and then ether three is designated port. Remember, we said that uh, there's always one designated port per segment and then since we have a root port on router 1 meaning our router 2 is our root bridge and we also said the root bridge doesn't have a root port or an alternate port all the ports of the root bridge are designated ports now let me scroll to the right so that we can see that and as you can see all our ethernet ports which is one, two, and three are designated. 
and ports connecting to our clients or PCs will always be designated ports. In our case, the Ether 3s. As you can see, also on router 1, we have designated port for Ethernet 3. And we also spoke about how switches elect the root bridge. We said that they use the lowest bridge ID. And bridge ID is made of two things. The priority and the MAC address. Now let me show you that. Okay, in order to show you that, on my router 2, let me go to bridge tab. And I'll double click my bridge entry. On our bridge entry, we'll go and click on spanning tree protocol tab. And under the spanning tree protocol tab, on priority field, we can see our priority is 8000 in hex. And then when you go to general, we can see there's our MAC address, which ends with 397A. Now let's go to router 1. And on router 1, I'll go to bridge again. And then double click the bridge entry. As we can see, the priority is the same, it's 8000. And when I go to general, we can see that the MAC address of router 1 is ending with 39AC. And in hexadecimal, we know that 7 is lower than A. That's why our router 2 is the root bridge. And when you go to status tab, we can see the root bridge ID. There it is, 8000. And the last part is the MAC address. As you can see, it's ending with 397A. Okay. Let me go to status on this side. And you can see on router 2, on the root bridge, the tick box is clicked. And the root bridge ID is 8000 and the MAC address. Now let's go back to ports. What's left now is for us to do the continual pin so that we can see how long does it take for spanning tree protocol to converge. Before I can do that, let me go to IP and then DHCP server because I made my router one a DHCP server. And then as you can see, I want to check the IP address for my clients or my PCs. I have 10.10.1.252 .10 and 10.10.1.253. .10 now, let me go to my laptop so that I can give the ping command and check what is the IP address of our laptop. Now that I know the IP address of my laptop, I'm going to ping 10.10.1.253, which is our client, and do the continual ping. While the ping is busy, let me go to interfaces. Let me drop it a bit. On the bridge GUI on both router 1 and router 2, I'm on post tab. So your focus, I need it to be on the router one. What I'm going to do to cause a fault for our spanning tree, I'm going to disable ether one and see how long does it take for our spanning tree to converge. Let me go to interfaces. Now let me disable my ether one. Okay, I've disabled it. Let's see how long does it take to converge. As we can see, we lost our ping. Our ping is still saying request timeout. We have three request timeout so far. Destination host unreachable. And now it came back. But our pings are still giving us a request timeout. Let's wait for it. After 15 request timeouts, that's when it came back. And then you can tell that maybe it took about plus minus 50 seconds. And when we go to our ports, and let me scroll to the right, we can see that 
our ether 2 is now the root port let me now enable our ether 1 so that it can take over from ethernet 2 and let's see how long is it going to take for it to take over from winbox is back but the ping is still saying request timeout it just came back right now which means it also took us about the same seconds plus minus 50 seconds and that was our classic spanning tree now let's do example of rapid spanning tree we are going to leave our ping as it is okay now let me go to our bridge and double click my bridge go to spanning tree tab and then now i'll click the rapid spanning tree protocol radio button okay let me also do it on this side double click spanning tree then click the rapid spanning tree and then i'll apply ok for both of them so now our hub lights are running rapid spanning tree let's go back to ports and now let me open the interface GUI again so i'm going to do what i did with the classic spanning tree let's go to ether one and disable it so that we can see how long is it going to take rapid spanning tree to converge okay i'll disable ether one it only took one request timeout and then it's back on the ping is going meaning semi-seconds okay let's go back to ether one i'll enable ether one again so that it can be our root port and then let's see only dropped one again so we can see that the difference is huge between rapid spanning tree and classic spanning tree when coming to conversions hope this lesson was informational and beneficial to you if you enjoyed this lesson please share it with someone you think will also benefit from it and last but not least, please don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you can be notified whenever we drop the lesson. Let me love and leave you. Have a blessed day.